Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Sleeping Giants. Now, in the last episode, we had a bit of a slow month, I guess you could say. Like, we had the uh, only two games, really. There was the Napla Dak game in the cup, which put us through to the semi-final, which has been drawn now. So you'll find out who we're playing in the uh, semis to the Serbian Cup. And we had our um, relatively disappointing, I guess, result against Donjic Srim. After they went 2-0 up in the first half... We kind of should have... I think we should have won that game. They went down to 10 men on 42 minutes and we should have turned that around on them. I, I felt that we did enough in that game to turn it fully on its head. But as it is, we took a point. Now, we've not actually lost... We've only lost three games all season. And the last game we lost was that one against Boris. We've actually been pretty solid since then in the league. And, you know, uh, it's just these draws, these ones that we should be winning, but we aren't. And, like, we should have won away at Radnicki. To, to lose a two goal lead there was a disgrace um, and it's the same in Partizan to lose the lead there was a disgrace to lose the lead here we just need to be putting these games to bed and Yagodino is even worse I mean that's the thing when you look at a lot of the games apart from the Voivodina game that was the only one I think that we really really deserve to lose apart from uh, of course Boris yeah they were just better than us but those are the only two games I think we really deserve to lose I think we should have won pretty much every other game that we've played this year. And that's my fault, because we had to work out a tactic, and it's been tough. It has. So over the uh, Christmas period, we've obviously played a few friendlies. I've managed to make a couple of signings, and I mean bare minimum stuff here, because we've just got no money currently at all. And most of the players I looked at, we just couldn't get near, basically. So, yeah. Um, in our... Pre-season, not pre-season, but like our summer friendlies. We played against CSKA Sofia. And Ashley, well, Despotovic scored a hat-trick in this game. He's clearly a good goal scorer and works well with this system. So I'm pretty pleased with that. I was a little bit disappointed in our other friendly results. So losing against Papa, who I genuinely had... They're a Hungarian side. I genuinely hadn't heard of them. Apologies for that, any Hungarians. Um, I genuinely did not know where they came from. But we lost 1-0 at them. And we also lost against Javel. I'm going to assume our... Czech side? No, they're Serbian as well. Apologies. They're in the second tier, it would seem. Yes. Um, but we lost against them in a friendly too, which was, again, disappointing. And then defeat to uh, Bero, who I'm going to assume a Bulgarian. Yeah, okay. Um, I think I got a bet on them something last year. <laughs> I recognise that name. Yeah, so we had a bit of a poor time there as well. And injuries are really being quite a problem for us. Now, we've... Our goalkeeper is out injured. We Lazar... No, Darko Lazovic has basically not played a game, barely played a game for us, because every time he comes back, he gets injured again. And that has not changed, basically. He is still injured. Uh, he's got a slip disc, and yeah. I mean, I don't know how many games he's played for us this year, but it is minimal. He has played a grand total of two. And he would be in the starting eleven every day of the week if I could, but he's been injured three times already this season. Total crap. Well, it's not total crap, it's just annoying. Um, to have him out pretty much the entire year so far on three separate injuries. Um, so yeah, in the one game we have played so far since we rejoined the league after Christmas, we beat Novi Pazar, and that's not really a big surprise since we've beaten them 5-1, 3-0, and now 3-1 in this game. And it was a complete domination on our part. Goals from Alexander Katai, who is back, so that is a good bonus. Uh, Mihailovic made it 2-0. Before Vladimir Radio... Uh, oh. Radivojevic made it... 2-1, and then Darko Lazic came in there to make it 3, and we probably could have done with maybe a couple more goals. It's one of the few times this season I've actually felt that we really did completely dominate this game from start to finish, and the tactic really did seem to work for us today, and I think maybe this is the one we're going to be going with. When you look at the match stats, 5 clear-cut chances, 4 half chances, we probably should have won by more. They, they took their one chance and they scored. Fair play to them. But the thing is, we need to be able to do this against other teams aside from Novi Pazar, basically. That, that is the key for us. So where all this leaves us coming into today's game against Vojvodina is still fifth in the league. Um, but we're now only one point off of the second spot because there was a draw, thankfully, uh, between Donji Srem and Partizan. Now... That is huge, because I think if Partizan had won that, I would have been very worried. We're six points behind them at the moment, which means that the game against Partizan is going to be absolutely crucial. That game, we have to win it, basically, I feel. Because I, I genuinely worry that even if we were to win practically every game we have left this season, I think Partizan will 
give it a good old crack at doing the exact same thing. And it might just be a case of who can win the most games for the rest of this year. That poor start we had where we were still trying to figure out tactics could well be our downfall on this one, uh, which is why I've got to make sure that we win the Serbian Cup and try to do our best to win this league because we really, really should be doing better than we are. I know it says we're fifth, but the fact is we are only a point off of second place and we have a better goal difference than all those teams. It's just... We're not quite there yet. That, that's basically the way I'm looking at it. <laughs> it's positive. I'll give you that. Um, in the cup, we were drawn against, I think it was Napoledak. Let me just quickly have a little look. See if I can remember how we do this one. Uh, we want... Yes, no, sorry, what we're talking about. We're playing against Radnicki, which is not a bad tie uh, when you actually look at it, really. Because Jagodina and Partizan are playing off against each other, and we get the benefit of playing against uh, Radnicki, which is certainly the plum tie. And it would be glorious if Jagodina could put out Partizan Belgrade for us. That would be lovely. Um, that would also, of course, mean that... Uh, wow, we were second at one point. <laughs> um, that would mean that we could get a really good go at the uh, Cup, and I think we can win it if we... I think we're capable of beating Radnicki. We're at home, and then a good win in the final will at least earn us our first piece of silverware and actually the first piece of silverware that I've won uh, in F Football Manager 15 so that'd be good for me I might get an award or a trophy for that like an achievement or whatever so that'd be cool um, anyway let's have a look at the squad I mean not much changed we do have some transfers to talk about in fact well let's talk about that now um, so basically I had a shitload of people try to come after my players again um, I had four different players demand to leave I sort of did the old, oh, well, I'll let you leave, but I'm not really going to let you leave thing, which, of course, upset them because it was either a case of me actually getting rid of them or having to do that, and I took the latter option. So now a lot of the squad were pissed off at me. But then what was I supposed to do? Let half the squad leave? We can't do that. It's ridiculous. It really is going to be difficult to hold on to these players. Um, so, yeah. Um, only real big changes are that... Uh, let me think about this. Yeah, Marco Grujic has gone out to Borac on loan, and Nemanja Ivanovic has gone out to uh, our affiliate club, BSK Borka. Um, now, we have brought in Dennis Strakulersi. Now, he's a sort of well-known free agent, and a guy in the comments did suggest that we had a little look at him. I had a little look, and in fact, his wages weren't too bad. And I just figured, why not? For some extra support, we had a little bit of wage budget, and he was literally the only player I could get on the free agents list anyway, uh, that was sort of even close to being up to the quality that we were looking for. A uh, bit of a risk taken on him, but I, I, I kind of figured it might be worth it. Oh, he's declining already, though, and it might not be the great, but it's only on a one-year deal. Uh, what am I talking about? Yeah, it's a one-year deal, so... It can't... Well, okay, year and a half. It can't really be too bad for us. It's not a huge whack of wage. So it'll have to be done, basically. Um, so yeah, that is that. We also did sign one more player, which I'm just going to see if I can find here. This is Imed Bukhari. Uh, this is the only other... I don't think he's joining us just yet. I don't actually know when he's... What the hell have we not... Oh, we may not have wrapped up the signing of him yet. I thought we'd offered him a contract. Yeah, okay, he joins in September. So it's going to be a little while yet before he can join us. But, you know, he's got all right stats offered to us by an agent i figured why the hell not we could do with a an okay winger he's, he's he's not special but he's all right and that's what we need right now we just need some some boosts to the team so let's just take a little look at the squad i know there's not really much to say on this one particularly so despotovic has got 13 goals in 14 games which is superb and is therefore our top goal scorer most assists of course is savicevic and gavrich with six apiece man of the match it's savicevic pass rating that is Kovacevic with 87, which is quality. Yellow cards, Gojic has got seven, which is annoying, which means he'll be suspended for the next game. Uh, red cards, we've got two each for Planic and Lazic. As for average rating, it's Savicevic. Now, one issue we are suffering from a little bit is the fact that Bosancic, Ancic, Gojic and Kariman, as well as Lazovic, are all out injured. And these are not exactly short-term injuries either. This is what's really annoyed me over. So now we, uh, we're we down to bare bones a little bit. Um... Let's just get into the match preview and hope we can come up with something today, guys, because we really, really need to. Let's put it that way. We, we've we got to try and win here. And I'm hoping... This is the tactic I've played for the last couple of games, and it seems to have worked relatively well, or it sure as hell did in our last game. I'm hoping today we'll have a sort of similar kind of effect, basically. That is what we're going to be trying out. Um, I hope it works. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see, really. Right, let's uh, do a quick bit to get rid of all the injuries and suspensions. So, yeah, as you can see, like Jovic is now our preferred striker for today, um, which is interesting. Hmm. I'm going to give him a go. If he's meant to be as brilliant as he is, then he should be able to score goals for us. If not, I'll bring on Despotovic and he can wrap up some stuff for us later. So Rakic is going to have to play him from the left, which is not really ideal for him. And Avramovsky is going to have to play in that centre role. That isn't really ideal for him either. Um... 
Djordjevic is going to have to play right back, so not really ideal either. And uh, Trukulia is going to have to play in goal for us today. So again, we're, we're down to a bit of a depleted kind of team, and that is not a position I was particularly fancying being in. I mean, look at these injuries. Um, Strakulersi isn't match fit yet, so again, it's going to take some time. Oh, I hope the injuries aren't going to be the death of us, that's for sure, but only time will tell. Uh, Stankovic will get a number here. I'm assuming he's another one of our youngsters. Of course, he's our third choice keeper. We just need to come. We need to come up with a win here. Vojvodina are a decent side, not anything special. They are struggling towards the lower end of the table, but you know, a good run could easily take them up into the top half. So it's it's neither here nor there. But I want to make sure that we can come up with wins in games like this. This is where it is absolutely vital for us to come up with big wins, and we've been doing okay lately. Defeats have been a premium, shall we say, and that's a good thing. Um, we've been kind of low on those since the Borac game. We've kind of strengthened up a little bit. Our tactic seems to have worked. We haven't lost a game since then, so that that's good, but we need less draws. That, that is the key for us, and I'm hoping today we can come up with something, a big, big win, to take us hopefully into second place. That That's my main aim for today, but that would require other games going our way. Um, so as long as we can not lose any ground and stay, you know, Gain three points, and basically that just allows other teams to mess up. If they all win, then they all win, but I'd rather they didn't. Right? Let's see what Jovic can do today. I'd like him to sort of maybe make today the day that he shows me why everyone was so raving about him. That would be awesome, because as yet, he's really not done that. Um, although he's not had a great deal of chances, I'll give him that. However, that's a great ball through. Luka Jovic is onside here. So Jovic is through, and that is an absolutely spectacular finish, and that is exactly what I was just talking about. That is what I need to see from this lad. I know we've not got him from that much longer, but the fact is we may as well make the best use of him while we've still got him. You know? <laughs> he's not really impressed me in most of the games he's played for so far because he's not really been created this many chances. This is not the sort of opportunity that he's really been presented with a great deal so far. We've, there's a great little ball through from Savicevic. Jovic with the great touch to take it across the defender's path, and then a lovely finish with a, just a little toe poke there, and it is 1-0 to Red Star Belgrade, and that is the perfect start for us. If we can just get a second goal here, Kukuriki are already two goals to the good there at Mladost. Um, a second goal would be ideal, though. Um, they've had a few shots, but they've not really hit the target just yet. We still have to be careful, because they've obviously got dangerous players. They're not a poor side, but we are, in a, we are ahead here. The problem we've had has been staying ahead in games. Right, get the tackle in. Get the tackle in. What is going on? That is a good save, I think. But why would they do that? I hate that. They just... They all cluster around one guy and then allow the other guy just to run straight past them all. It's really annoying. And that happens quite a lot. And you never see that in real life. Well, very rarely. Um, but we're still a goal up. We've rode our luck a little bit on that particular move. But we do still lead the game. Uh, everyone's still looking quite good for body language. So we don't need to make any sort of on-the-pitch team talks. We're looking okay here. We're looking okay. Who's got the ball? Is it us or them? No, oh, it's them again. I don't like this. I like to see more highlights from us. Uh, Zikic, come on. This is worrying when this happens. That's a great piece of play from Jovic. Really determined play from the youngster. And now he's just given the ball straight to them. That was useful. I, I like that when that happens. Not. Um, uh, he showed the great determinant. Right, that's good. No, you shouldn't. Right, excellent. Ugh. Why didn't you just play that back to him first time? I have an irritating feeling that we're going to lose the ball and consider... Oh, I thought he was going to try and score from there. That would have been so frustrating. Oh, blocked again. And I don't know what's up with this. But we just cannot seem to keep the ball. And I know that you don't need to have retained possession on to not play like morons. I don't understand that. We just cannot seem to keep the ball. Okay. But we are still in the lead. And what have we got here as far as... No, I don't have retained possession on. I've got... We can't do that with more direct passing anyway. Um, riding our luck a little bit here. Why are those two so close together? Oh, dear. Right, that's it. Guess better. Rakic, she's coming in field. I don't know why he's coming in field. Uh, Savicevic, Avramovsky, Gavrich at the far post. He's not going to shoot from there, is he? Surely Rakic! Oh, fuck. That was the chance. That was 2-0. It had to be 2-0. He's literally in on goal. You've got to do better. That's the sort of thing when you see that thing happening, you think to yourself, okay, we're not going to win this game either. But they've only hit the target one. Oh, no. Does that count as a clear-cut chance for them? That's really, really bizarre. 
didn't even look like a decent opportunity. If we can just get the half-time, good tackle from Rakic. And he's not really followed it up with anything worthwhile, though. That's the problem. You made a tackle. Great. Now make another one. Swoops around the corner and Lazic is going to bring this one away. Or just thump it straight back to them. That's always excellent. I like that. that that's some good defending there. Do I have passing to space on? No, we'll check in a sec. It was a good first half in terms of in front of goal. Oh, he's looking a bit tired there as well. But I don't know. The defending still makes me worry. We don't look solid. They're creating opportunities. No, we don't have passing to space on. Okay, what can we do to try and... Let's just turn off hit early crosses. Um... Maybe turn off run at defence because our players may be not good enough to dribble at these guys. Maybe that's the problem. Maybe that's why we keep losing the ball. Let's just turn those two off and see what we do for the second half. Maybe just free them up a little bit. Maybe allow them to get to the byline a little bit more. Keep the ball higher up the pitch. That way when we do, if we do lose the ball, it's not quite so deep and we don't get counted on quite as easily. That's the only thing I can think of really in this second half for us to do here. But we are still winning and that's all that matters for me. And... At the moment, it would take us into third place in the league. And I'm assuming Partizan are playing tomorrow. But it would at least average. Oh, it's cleared. Rakic brings it down. Get back on side. Get back on side. Avramovsky. Savicevic. Jovic. Surely that's offside. It must be offside. It's offside, yeah. But good running from Jovic. He got into a good position and he just couldn't keep himself on side. But my goodness, had he done that, oh, that would have been glorious. We are going to have to make some substitutions soon because Savicevic is looking absolutely shredded. Ah, uh, dear. Okay, another... Okay, we're looking a little bit better in this second half. The highlights are coming from us rather than... Oh, dear. <sighs> he says as we're about to get counter-attacked. Counter -attack. Long ball over the top, perhaps? Just mindless long ball that goes through all of our defenders? That's a... Gr no, it's not. <laughs> it's just going to go straight through that gap. Oh, look, what a massive surprise. How is that allowed to happen? That's a good clearance. Except it's going to come straight back at us again. Um, I think we may need to close down more. We're dominating... So oh, don't be silly. Oh, my God. Right. Okay, we're going to close down a little bit more. I just had a comment about this. I don't know if that's really wise to use it with the tactic we're currently playing, because obviously it kind of relates to a tactic we were playing when the comment was originally made, which was on episode four. Uh, but, right. Savicevic is absolutely crim Uh So we're going to bring on Peshnik to play in the middle because we don't really have much choice in the matter. And as okay, and he's got a goal for us, so I can't knock him really, uh, as he's been. I'm going to bring on Despotovic just because he's always good for a goal. He's been prolific, frankly, for us this year, so why the hell not? Let's give the lad a try. Um, let's just confirm and give the team talk. I'll do it. Computer appears to be buggering up again. That's always fun. God, I can't wait to get a new computer. <laughs> happy day right 25 minutes we're a goal up that's where we need to stay I don't want to throw it on defensive or anything just yet because 25 minutes left anything could happen in that time and I'm not prepared to take that risk shall we say um, I'm not entirely sure what's happening now it appears to have frozen entirely that is bloody beautiful you know um, so right finally Christ on a bike oh that took ages but that's my computer, that ain't the game. Well, it's the game, but like, because my computer's awful. Babic is a great player. I've been looking at... Oh, Despotovic is in. That looked offside as well. No, no, he's not. He was moving back to the halfway line. I remembered. Despotovic comes on and within seconds has made it 2-0. I know that that is nothing to do with pitch. It was just, you know, a bit of luck, I suppose. But the fact is, he had position to make that, um, to make the run. And that is utterly awful. Not the goal, the 3D match engine there. Sorry, uh, again, computer, shit. <laughs> now we're back down to fourth somehow. <laughs> but that's what I meant about this game. We had to sort of, right, we're going to make one more sub as well while we've got 10 minutes to go since uh, Mihailovic is knackered, but we don't really have anyone that can play there. Who else is knackered? Oh, of course, the other fullback, who, again, we have no one that can play there because Peshnik has already come on. He's a useful player, Peshnik, can play in a lot of positions. Where else is... Who else can we even bring into this game? We've got someone that can play left. Okay, Keita is going to have to come on here for Rakic, although Keita is not exactly fit himself. He'll have to do. Ten minutes to go. Just coast to a win here. This would be a, a decent win, actually, when you look at our earlier season form. We are starting to look a little bit more comfortable, and oh my god, really. But good that Donji Shrem are actually losing uh, against Novi Pazar, so that's a surprising one. And I will take that with open arms, because that's one 
team above us that's going to be dropping points at least. Slide into the channel. Please slide into the channel. Or just lose the ball. That that works also. Um, I can't make a change there, so we're going to have to keep Kovacevic on, which is not clever at all. Please don't play the ball through the gap again. I don't like the fact that there's even a gap there. Penalty, perhaps, for them? I think that's what they probably deserve right about. Oh, my days. What is it with these late goals? Thank God we've got ourselves a two-goal lead, really. Just... I'm sorry, I can't... Nah, sorry, I can't show you that, guys. It's total crap. Right, okay. It's going incredibly slowly. Right, we're going to go on defensive. We're going to just park the freaking bus for these last couple of minutes since what usually happens is we usually bloody concede and we just have and I don't want to make it two because that would make me want to throw things um we've been decent enough today they've had a few clear-cut chances but not really the conventional sort that I would consider to be clear-cut chances so to speak that should do it right we're into the uh, well we, the game is finished that should do it again it's not the perfect result by any stretch of the imagination why is the game still going on are you fucking kidding me? Um, I'm at a loss for words. The game should have been over before this even got near going in the net. And what is the keeper doing? Oh my day, I can't believe this crap. 2-0 up, three minutes to go, and somehow... You, I... I just don't know what you can do. We go on defensive, we go to waste time. That's fine. But how does this happen every single time? That's so. That's a two-goal lead we've thrown away in the last two minutes. That's fucking unacceptable. Oh, Jesus, this game's a joke sometimes. What is the keeper doing? And why didn't the whistle blow? Ugh. Lovely. Oh, sorry guys, I don't know what to say about that. We should have won that by an absolute fucking mile. Oh, interesting how that happened in the fifth minute of four minutes. Again, that's been happening to me a lot, although we haven't been conceding goals in those stoppage times usually. It's just been that you've been getting more stoppage time than there actually was stoppage time. I had five minutes the other day on a match that had one minute of stoppage time with no injuries involved. It's a, it's, it's really stupid. Oh, I can't believe that. That was an... I just... Yeah, sorry. I, I can't believe that's just happened. We were dominantly... We were great in front of goal in this game. We got a 2-0 lead, nice and solid. And all of a sudden, they're Barcelona. So they don't even need to be Barcelona because all you have to do is shoot and the goalkeeper will just bat it into the net, apparently. Uh, I know he's not a first... I know he's not, like, first-choice goalkeeper, but he is also a professional footballer. So, you know... Weighing up the two, probably should be able to save a ball that's hit straight at you. I genuinely couldn't believe it when they, the play continued. And I thought, oh, he's hit it straight at him. And then he actually managed to bat it into his own net. So that's always fun. Right, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop complaining now. But that was total crap. Um, and I don't know what tactic says... Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. Anyway, so that's how we are at the moment, guys. And I think that could really struggle, put us in some trouble now because when Partizan inevitably win the game that they have in hand against Rad, that is, and they're at home, that's going to put us eight points behind with 13 games left. And that is trub trub time, guys. I'm not going to lie. That is trub trub time. And uh, I thought the tactic was working well. But what can you do about crap like that, really? Um, wish there was a tactic that said don't act like morons. But unfortunately, yeah, that is, an, that is a team instruction I would never turn off. So, guys, uh, let's just take a little look at what will be in the next episode. So it's February now. Uh, the next episode, when it eventually loads, Christ, will be... Hmm... Yagodina. It'll be the Yagodina game. Uh, so we've actually got the first leg of our semi-final of the uh, Cup in the next episode as well. Um, so we've got... Napladak at home, winnable. Radniki, the bottom club, away, winnable. In fact, not winnable, have to win them all. Um, Radniki, of course, we have to win that too. And then we've got Jagodina at home. That's going to be crucial for us. So we need win, 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 win. We basically need to win the next... We need to win every game for the rest of the season, basically, I think, to really have a realistic chance of this. But especially, we have to win at Partizan now. That is desperately, 
Oh, dearie me. Whew, this has not been a tough, uh, this has been a tough time for me lately. But there, there we go, guys. So if you guys are like we've seen, please feel free to drop a like on the episode. And if you'd like to even more than that, please feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Sleeping Giants and Portsmouth in your inbox every single day at 5.30 and 8 o'clock respectively. And I will see you guys in the next episode for the Agordina game. Bye-bye.